welcome to my tax prep office. In this quick video, we are going to complete a return from start to finish that has a Schedule C, depreciation, and a rental property. First, on the client information sheet, we are going to select filing status number two, married filing jointly. Next, we are going to enter the personal information for the taxpayer and the spouse. Now, we are going to enter the address down below. Something that is really nice when entering your client's zip code, my tax prep office will automatically load the city and state. You could even add the state return based on the zip code entered here. For this year, we have two required questions on the client information sheet. One is for the 1095A, and depending on how this question is answered, we'll decide whether the 1095A will automatically load or not. Now, let's add our first form. To do that, click the Add Form button, and let's search for the Schedule C. On the Schedule C, we're going to select Taxpayer from the drop-down list. Select the business code for your client on line A. If you're not sure what business code to use, you can click the link above to review the IRS instructions for the Schedule C. All of our business codes match what the IRS has published. You can enter the business name and address below. If the address is the same as the home address, click this box. Question G is very important for your client. Depending on how this question is answered will have an effect on how much loss your client can claim. If you want more information about this, please review the IRS instructions for the Schedule C. For question I, I will be selecting no. But if your client is required to file 1099s, we do offer those forms in our after-the-fact payroll. Now, let's complete part one, income. You will notice lines 1A and 1B are yellow. That means they are calculated fields, and my tax prep office will automatically carry the information over for you. For this year, the information for line 1A will be carried over from the 1099Ks, and line 1B will carry the information from the 1099 MISS and NECs. By right clicking on the calculated field, you can see which forms are linked, and you can also create a new form for the line you're working on. To link the new form to the Schedule C, select the Schedule C from the drop down list after adding it. Once you have completed the form, you will see the information flow to the Schedule C. You will also notice Add New Buttons below lines 1A and 1B. If you want to add more income than what was reported on the 1099s, click these. All you have to do is enter the descriptions and amounts. Now, let's give this client some expenses that are both necessary and common in Part 2. There are a few ways to enter the expenses for the Schedule C. You can either enter the totals on the lines themselves, or you can click the Add New Buttons to enter the expenses one at a time and then the totals will be calculated for you. Or you can also use our Data Import feature by picking Tools, Data Import, select Schedule C. We suggest using our template and once it's complete, all you have to do is upload the file. Once you scroll through, you will see all the expenses you just uploaded. Car and Truck Expenses is a calculated field. My tax prep office will carry the information from the Vehicle Depreciation Summary or Part 4 of the Schedule C. To add a vehicle from the Depreciation Summary, click Tools, Vehicle Depreciation Summary, and enter the required information. Once you've completed the Vehicle Depreciation Summary, the information will flow to the Schedule C. Questions 32A and 32B will have an effect on the loss your client can claim. If you want more information, please review the IRS instructions for the Schedule C. Select whether your client's business is a qualified trader business under our worksheet. And once the Schedule C is complete, you will notice a green check mark meaning it's active and the information from the Schedule C is going to flow to the 1040. Now let's add our rental property by clicking Tools, Asset Depreciation Summary, click Add New, enter the description, date and service, select 
the form you want to link it to, in this case, the Schedule E, and select the column for the Schedule E you want to link this property to. Enter your cost basis, enter any other appropriate information, select your asset type, and once you select the asset type, the method and convention in life will automatically be added for you. And it's just that easy to add a property to the Schedule E. To complete the Schedule E, we're going to select Taxpayer from the drop-down list. Our client only has one property, so we're going to enter that address on property A. Our client for today has only one rental property, but you can enter up to three properties on the Schedule E. And if you need more than three properties, you can use the Schedule E duplicate. Select the property type, align 1B, then enter the amount of fair rental days and any personal use days if applicable. Enter the income for your rental property, and now let's enter our expenses for property A. The question, did you actively participate in the rental activity, is another very important question if your client has a loss. Depending on how this question is answered will have an effect on the loss your client can claim. If you need more information, please review the IRS instructions for the Schedule E. Select if your client's activity is a qualified trade or business, and once the Schedule E is complete, you'll see a green check mark in the Forms Navigator, and the information will flow to 1040. Now, let's complete our e-file summary. Enter the date. Check the box to indicate this return will be e-filed. Check the box to automatically generate pins for your clients. Enter your client's ID information. Select the box for the taxpayer and spouse to authorize your firm to enter your client's pins. Under the refund payment option, we are going to select paper check. Under the prepare information at the bottom of the e-file summary, once you've confirmed there are no errors in the return, click e-file, transmit return. And just like that, we've completed a return that has a Schedule C, a rental property, and depreciation.